All right, good morning, guys. Jesse, Dapper Dude's Garage. We got a pretty good job this morning. So, customer called last night, wanted a quote on two door installs and a motor install. Said he's going to get everything himself. He just wanted to know what labor I would charge him. So, I come out to measure the doors and everything like that. And on that, we're going to charge a $50 service call because it was like over an hour drive. So, $50 service call for that. I quoted them $250 per door because these are only 8 by 7 garage doors. Not too complicated at all. Easy to maneuver and handle. So I told them $250 for each door and then $200 to install the motor because it's a fresh install. So not a bad price. So $700 labor for the two doors and the motor plus the $50 service call. We're going to come out to $750. No tax. So we'll get to his house and get this thing rolling. So yeah, that's the job for today. Two garage doors and a motor install. It's gonna be a fun one. So we'll get there and crank the cameras on once we get rolling, guys. So stay tuned. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is put vice grips on here, clamp the door up. Then what I did, you see these extension springs right here. Take those off next, took the pulley off right here. The same pulley that's right there, took it off on this side, took the springs and the cables off this side. And over here, no more springs attached. So now when I let the door down, it's gonna be dead weight. So I can just let the door down and then start taking the panels apart, just like that, and then replace the tracks, so. All right, next thing to do, got the door down. So I'm just gonna start destacking these panels, take these hinges off, the rollers, and it'll free up the panels. But before you do that, you wanna put vice grips in here, something to hold the panels up, so the door don't just come crashing down once you take the hinges off. So let's get to it. Power tool. top of door the, the hinges are like lodged in there just got to hammer them up a little bit to get them to pop out what you do to get these crazy hinges to pop off just stick a screwdriver up under them like so it's tough Or you did it to that side, just use a screwdriver to pop up, leverage against the hinge right there. Leverage against the hinge, reach in there, pop it up. This middle one is a little pain. Go ahead and take the vice grip. So, 
stick it right here. Keep up with these. And again, and again to get these to pop off, just hit them. to get one of these sides out. This style door is a pain. I'm gonna go ahead and take the lag bolt out right here. Right here. And basically free up that whole track because I gotta take it off anyways, so. This tool. all these little bolts and stuff as you can, screws. And just continue to take the rest of the track off. Right. 
Next, I hung the horizontal track right here. So this is the radius bend right here. What I did is first attach it back here while sitting the other end on the ladder. So if you're ever doing a door install, it's good to have two ladders. Put that little half inch bolt back there, put the nut on so it holds. Come and lift this part up, connect it right here by these two little bolts like this. They're carriage style bolts that are flat when the door comes up in the track. Connect with two little nuts. Then this part right here, 9 16 bolt right here into the flag bracket. It, it holds it. I haven't tightened anything. Rule of thumb, you don't tighten anything until you're done. So it rests right there. Another carriage style bolt right here, and there'll be one more that goes in, goes in that hole right there. So we'll stick that in there. And put the... And tighten it up. Right there. So these have to be tightened with a tool because I don't know if you can see, but they've got like a little ridge that once it's tightened, it kind of seats in there and bites into the track and doesn't allow it to rotate. So yeah, that one's done though. That's pretty much it on this. So now I can start stacking the door and then build the other side. All right, so next I'm gonna put these bottom brackets on because I'm gonna start putting that bottom panel into the tracks over here and then build the other track over here. So you'll notice these on this style door to got two little notches right there that are gonna slide in these. So you stick in and it slides up. Get that bottom piece out of the way. So there you go, it just fits in a groove. And that'll be two of these. Usually on most doors they're painted red just to kinda warn not to take them off. Cause once you get the door installed, of course the springs are loaded on this little bracket. The cables connect right here. So don't wanna take that off. one-handed same thing on the other side Got it. Looks good and flush with that bottom right there. That's what you want. All right, so we got the bottom panel in. Got that bottom plate put on with the roller. I went ahead and put the hinge and the roller on right there. Put the middle hitch, put the middle hinge on right there. And I started this side as well. Put the roller on the bottom. Hinge with the roller right here. And I kinda, I forgot my nails. Normally you can hit a nail in there and bend it over to hold. All I can use right now is these lag bolts. It'll help me stack the door as I get higher. So, got that one put on. We'll put the next panel on. While it's on the ground over there, put all the hinges and stuff on. And then come stack it. All right, so that second panel to get it prepped, it needs a number one hinge in the middle. Number one hinges always go in the middle. See, it has the number one on it right there. Need two number two hinges. There's one. That's number three. Three. That's it. So two number twos. Number one and two rollers. <laughs> Got those. So quick tip. I've already got this panel prepped, right? So when I bring the next one, I can just sit it on there and these hinges flap up and connect the panel. So when you're putting the next door, prepping the next door, you put all your hinges, all your hinges on the top row up here, not down here. Cause remember the bottom panel is down here. Hinges are gonna flip up and connect right here, here and down here. So I'm prepping up here now. Every time you prep the next panel, you prep the top. <sighs> so, with that said, 
Number two. Number two hinge. Put a bolt in here. Get that thing lined up. Two little bolts right here. Then put your roller, just for good measure, always put it on the lower slot. As we said, as I said before, the number one hinge will go in the middle. Hope that thing don't fall off. It's going to. Sorry. All right, and just bolt that second hinge in. So just stick this roller in here at an angle in the track. It goes in. Slide up and flip the hinges down. Just stick it in the hinges or on the rollers and rotate it on. Okay. Then all we'll do is put the elbow brackets on. This is little pieces right here. And on these elbow brackets, a number it'll have a number five it goes on the bottom most part and then a number six will go right here on the next highest part yes yeah, so we got that number six hinge on just let that sit there now i need to get two lag bolts that'll be these things right here go ahead and kind of You want to kind of follow the holes, you know, somewhat. Stick it how you like it. Look at the balance on the door, the lineup, and just kind of shoot it somewhere within the same vicinity. But give yourself room to work also. Raise it up off the ground just a little bit. This one but here's where you want to get the level that's why I shot that middle one first because then you can get the level see what I mean you kind of see where it's level we're looking at this one right here that's pretty level right there go ahead and shoot that Look at that, 
that beauty. My ears are ringing. So see, I like the placement and everything on that. It looks nice. Now I can safely put that top panel on. Actually, what you need to do is put the track on first because look, bottom's gonna sit right here, but the top is gonna sit up here in the radius bend. So I gotta get the track put on. So we'll do that. So I'll sit one ladder right here. The big one right here in the back. Go ahead and give it a half inch bolt. Got through there. Watch it. Let's go. Get that thing on there. Hold it so it don't fall. So I've got this thing resting on my shoulder. All right. Put it in the top. flag bracket put on there so as you can see I put one of these bolts right here there's another hole you gotta put one more and then we can bolt that to the wall Perfect right there. Right there. This bottom swivels, so I gotta shoot it just a little bit. That's perfect right there. Perfect on the money. Now, two more, two more of these bolts right here. Stick them in there and we'll be good. And just hold it with your fingers.
Everything's lining up good. Look at that. Now we gotta get the stabilizer. Let's go ahead and see where we're lining up. So what you do, I just know from experience, this last hole is gonna line up right here. Even right there. And if that's right, you should have another hole that lines up right here. See, one, two, and then you can stick your 9 16 in there. Carriage the flathead to the inside. And that's just to make sure you got it. Stick the bolt on there so it holds. Again, make sure it's lined up. The last screw hole closest to the radius bin to the last hole on your stabilizer bracket right here. Go ahead and stick both of those in there. All right, so this is the last panel right here. So these little weird, funny brackets like this, they're called top brackets. They're gonna hold the roller. Sometime, depending on how it fits, you can flip them upside down, right side up, it doesn't matter. We're gonna stick it like this though. Now here's the thing, since you got the track mounted, this last panel, you don't need it on the last top panel, you don't need a hinge in the middle. Just one on the side, leave that, don't do the other one for now, because I got the tracks mounted. Here's why. Hold on just a second. Let me get the ladder situated. So, you know, stick the hinge in at an angle, or the roller. Stick the roller in at an angle, that way you can pivot the door around. Just like that. Bam. And that's why you don't put the hinge on that last side. If you did, it's gonna be hard to put on anyways. So, just leave it there. The pan that'll hold. So notice also I brought my hinge with me, set it on my ladder. That way I don't have to go back and get it and risk this falling. It should stay being a small door. If this were a 16 footer, it could fall like it probably would. So, but on eight footers, they're, they're so small and stiff. See, it'll reflex and rebound right back. So take the hinge, put it in first at an angle. Slide down. What I was doing right there is just adjusting, making sure this can flex and seal tight up here at the top. Now that the other side's on. I gotta adjust this bracket forward. There, she lets the door shut. Beautiful. And on that note, let's finish tightening up all the hinges right here. You 
gonna tighten those. Make sure they're good. It's nice. Gotta tighten that. Half inch back here. Part on this part, how you put the spring hardware on, that's next. How you get that on, on these extension springs. That's these springs right here. So they basically just stretch and contract. So when the door's up, that's when they're, you know, contracted and loose. So you just see right here, actually. When the door's down, like this one is right now, they're stretched under extreme pressure. There's no way to put them on. So you gotta raise the door up to get the springs to contract loose, resting like this right here. So to do that on this type of spring system, you gotta raise the door up and then clamp it off with vice grips. So. <laughs> Here goes nothing. Beautiful. Making sure everything lines up. That was nice and quiet. Yeah, that was nice. All right, so getting the pulleys. First thing is to get these big 9 16 bolts. these pulleys up here Whew. so basically they're gonna go I'll make sure this thing's good right up here what you want to do is make sure basically put it in a slot where this wheel clears the flag bracket up there so it looks like second square hole so get a washer ready put the nut through that little pulley right there stick the washer on hold on i gotta take my gloves off too big and bulky so stick it through Stick the washer on. And then the nut, and tighten it down. So we need a 9 16 wrench to hold them. Put the nut through the pulley. It's gonna be a second square up there. Put the washer on. And then the bolt or the nut. Add the tool and the wrench. Don't have to be too too tight. So those pulleys are on. All right. So these little these are little hooks that go into the angle iron up here. See that should be these what the uh, springs mount to. So we'll go ahead and do that real quick. 
can basically judge it about the same as they got it on that side. Come on. Go ahead and let that hang for now. Looks good. Let that hang. Next, you got two safety cables and two extension cables. All right. So you'll notice a couple of these cables have nothing on either end. That's just a safety cable right there. So. Then one pair of the cables has loops at the end of it. This goes on the bottom bracket of the door, right up here. So. I'm gonna attach those real quick. Show you where they go. So, you can't really see it, but inside here, yeah, let me see it good over there. See right here, just pops around just like that, and then bring it under, connect it to the pulley, and just bring it back here. What's going to do is connect through the spring right here. So just kind of pull it back, put it in the pulley. It may fall out though, but it doesn't matter. Put the nut, the flat piece on the inside, coming from the inside because this side of the pulley, sorry. So pull the cable around the pulley. Just kind of hold it in place. The nut will come from the inside out because you want the smoothest part closest to the track so it doesn't stick out like this side and get in the way. So, but first of course, you're gonna put it through the clip. Stick it through just like so. Oh, I'm trying to get that nut. Take it down to 16 and tighten that baby down. So at this point, you can put the safety cable on first. It doesn't really matter. But yeah, it's better to run your safety cable now because the spring is contracted, less distance to less distance to travel, of course. So let's, let's go ahead and do that. Cut the tape off. See, easier to do it like that and run it through the hole like so and then basically you'll tie this thing off any way you can run it through some of these holes a few times
Again, it's just a safety cable, so. Oh, come on. Something like that should be just fine. It's just made to catch the springs in the event they break. There we go. Now we can go ahead and run this cable. Oh, hold on, hold on. These S clips right here, S hooks. These are made to be a quick adjustment on the springs. Show you. All right, so I've got the cable wrapped around the spring. Just wanna make sure it's pretty tight at rest. So you got a punch clip with an S hook on it. This S hook, as you can see, this S hook right here, it's made to be a quick adjustment to fit in any of these holes right here. So first just kind of thread these through here and just kind of gauge it by hand. Like I said, what you want is this pulley to be under, you know, pretty good tension by the time you set it up here. You don't want it to be crazy, crazy tight, but you definitely want it to be, you know, good enough. You don't want it to be slack because when the door's up, you want it to hold. So put it right there. I like that, honestly. Cables are still tight. So then what we'll do, oh, come on now. You gotta get this thing to back up just a little bit and put it through the loop. All right, so we made a little loop in the S clip, the punch clip. See, like that. Keep going around in the circle. And that'll usually stay. That's that. That cable is on. And all I'll do is feed this extension. Or Safety cable. Do it right here. do this but it's
fifth hole. Put the safety cable through there. Get it tied off back here again somewhere. And start looping it through and make sure it's cinched pretty good. Let's do one more. Basically, all I did was get this to feed. All right, go through this little hole. Oh, damn. Springs are done. Everything looks good. Time to pull this vice grip and see how this thing shuts. Let's do it. Looks perfect. Nice. So, so check this out real quick. I made an adjustment. Now that gap that was over there is sealed good. So I did a little thinking off camera and all I did was I noticed the way everything was situated. This is a quick connect, that little S-clip. You can just take it off while the door's up and just move it up or back a slot to either increase or decrease the spring tension. So I felt like if this side were sagging more, that side over there was tight enough or slack enough. I didn't want any more slack. so. What I did was take this S-clip and move it up one more slot. And even that little, little bit of tension was enough to level the door out beautifully. So that's it. That is a wrap. I'm gonna go out here, get everything cleaned up, situated, take a video so I can send it to the homeowner. Go give us something. All right, guys, that's a wrap on part one of this video. Part two is going to be the opener installation. These customers never had an opener on either one of these garage doors, so that's a pretty cool one. It's fresh installs, so it's got a lot of informative type stuff. You know, how I troubleshoot, figure out which wires go where. Pretty cool how to program everything. So, yeah, appreciate it, guys. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share. You know the drill.